Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to Rebecca Hill. Okay, without any luck, yes, okay, great. Hey everyone, so uh, yeah, my name's Rebecca and I'm a software engineer at Usabilla, which is a feedback solutions company based here in Amsterdam. <laughs> so each time I've built an application with React, particularly when it starts to scale, I found myself struggling with this question, where does all the business logic go? You know, all the tricky app specific stuff? Well. Spoiler alert, there is no one answer to this, because by definition, business logic is unique to your use case. But I have a few ideas that I want to share with you. OK, so let's split the problem up into three main areas. Firstly, we have data manipulation. So say we need to display a user profile. Well, some of the data might come from user input and some from an API endpoint. Uh, well, we might want to merge that data in a specific way. Next up, we have conditional business logic. So for instance, on Chrome, if a user has no internet access, then they get to be shown a really cute dinosaur game. And lastly, we have the area of asynchronous data flow. So for instance, we might have an app that translates text real time to emojis. And it needs some specific logic in order to make the calls to our translation service seem really smooth to the user. OK, so the focus of my talk is going to be on apps using Redux. And a very, very quick recap, just in case you haven't used Redux before. Components use action creators to dispatch actions that are picked up by pure functions called reducers. These create new versions of the application state uh, for the store, which components read, and then the cycle starts all over again. OK, so let's start with data manipulation. Say you have an online store that sells books. And you want to show your users a list of just your best-selling authors. Well, doing the actual filtering is pretty straightforward. But where should we put that function? For these kinds of tasks, selectors are pretty much always the way to go, even in very small apps. Here we have a reducer file that includes a get best-selling best authors selector that contains our filter. And then in our product list container, we use the selector in the Redux map state to props function. In this simple form, our selector is really just a nice utility function with the convention that it accepts a state object and returns the derived data. This means it's really easy to work with, and it can be used in any place that knows about the Redux state, for instance, map state to props and in middleware functions. And if your app is of a significant size, then it might be worth looking at an enhancement called reselect, which can really help with performance. But the key is to be consistent. By containing all the knowledge about your state shape in your reducers and selectors only, rather than dotted around your components and middleware, refactoring becomes a million times easier. Cool, so next up is conditional business logic. Let's say that our bookstore only sells really rare, one-of-a-kind books. So we need to add some validation to check that when a user tries to add a book to their shopping cart, we only allow them to do so if it's not already there. So what if we did this in our action creators or thunks? A thunk, by the way, is just an action creator enhanced by middleware. Here we have a thunk called conditional add to cart. It uses a selector to get a list of the current cart items from the state to check if the new book ID is there. If it is, then we return out of the function. And if not, then we're allowed to add the book. The benefit that thunks have over normal action creators is that A, they have access to the state, so we don't have to pass the whole cart items list through. And B, they allow you to return whatever you want, including undefined, which is what's happening here if the book already exists in the cart. However, personally, I try to err on the side of putting more logic in my reducers. The principles of Redux include decoupling what happened from how the state changes. Action creators like the previous one kind of steal all the logic away from the reducer and essentially just tell it what to set in the state, which kind of defeats the purpose of that separation. There are a few benefits to favoring reducers. They're pure functions, of course, so they're much easier to test, maintain, refactor, and debug. You're also less likely to dispatch a bunch of actions from your thunks that cause the UI to re-render, meaning less risk of performance issues and the state being inconsistent. 
The main difficulty people have with trying to put more logic in the reducers is that they can only access their slice of the state, which can be kind of annoying, but it doesn't mean it's not worth thinking through, because often the solution actually really improves the architecture of your application. If this isn't possible, or it's overly difficult, or impure, or async, then I go to my middleware of choice. OK, so let's look at async logic. What's the best way to retrieve our array of books in the first place? Well, for smaller Redux apps, the sensible choice is Redux Thunk. But often, I find that my apps get to a size and complexity where this doesn't really work for me anymore. So my go-to solution is Redux Saga. Saga is actually an old Norse word, which means a long, dramatic story. So pretty applicable. Not to this talk, though, because it's a very short talk. <laughs> Redux Saga uses generator functions, which you can see from the functions with the asterisk by them and the keyword yield. They allow sagas to be like a separately running thread in your application. And they mean that your code can be read like standard synchronous JavaScript, kind of like async await, but with a few more awesome features. So sticking to the simple use case for the explanation, here we have a book saga, which takes every load books action that's dispatched in the application and calls load books. Load books calls our API service to fetch the list of books and returns it into the book data variable. The function waits for that to complete, complete and if successful, it dispatches fetch book success. And if there's an error anywhere, then it dispatches fetch books failure. Cool, OK. so. I'm going to start off with something really small that doesn't even use Redux. Remember, don't include extra tools and complexity if you don't need it. First off, file structure. Because it's super simple, I've stuck to the Rails style easy separation by file type in this app. Here's the main container component for the app. If we start by looking at the business logic for async flow, we can see that the component did mount is async. And here it calls our mystery service. The actual API call has been abstracted away into this service, so it's easier to test and update and gives us a better separation of concerns, especially if we want to add any complexity here in the future. Next up is data manipulation business logic. So here we're getting a list of active mysteries to render. Note that we're using the selector convention and passing through the whole state, even though we're not using Redux in this app. And in the selector, we're returning the filtered mysteries based on the active filter. By splitting us out like this, our logic becomes super simple to use, change, and test, because it's a pure, predictable function. Next, here's a cool app from Joshua Como that I borrowed. It has a really smooth onboarding process, which is a perfect use case for sagas. So if we dive into the code, you can see he's also structuring his app Rails style. And for conditional business logic, if we look at this go to next stage action creator, for example, you can see there isn't actually any logic here. But with the reducers, there is a fair bit. It's responding to that action and figuring out which stage to return. And in this onboarding saga, it's picking up that same action. It's going through each of the onboarding steps and then handling a side effect and saving a flag to local storage. I really love the readability of this app. And finally, here's a game I built. So games have a lot of business logic, because there's a lot of process flow to control. So here are the selectors. And you can see I've actually included them as a separate file, instead of putting them with the reducers. I find apps differ on this a lot based on personal preference. But I don't really think it matters as long as your state is still easy to refactor. In this app, pretty much all of the processing logic is actually in the sagas. Because it's a game, I was finding it really difficult to keep the flow in my head over multiple types of files. Having the ability to centralize it all with Redux Saga was a total lifesaver. So that's the end of my story. However you choose to manage your business logic, the main thing to keep in mind is to decouple it as much as possible from the rest of your application. This makes your logic easier to test, reuse, iterate on, and read. Hopefully, this has inspired you to think a bit about the architecture of your application. If you want to hear more, I'm doing a longer version of this talk in a couple of weeks, and I'll tweet a link to the recording when it's online. Thanks.